Well, I think now is a great opportunity to transition um, for any panelists to ask any other panelists some questions. Um, so, and maybe I'll start it off and just ask for anyone who wants to answer, what do you see happening in the next you know, year or so of personal token development? Where, or do you think we're gonna be at the same time in 2021? I can speak, I can say just one thing quickly about Rally. I'm very excited about Rally. Uh, it's a brand new project. They are issuing creator coins. And I think this is uh, probably the future of streamers or YouTubers or podcasters, newsletter, any content creator really. Um, if they can issue a token where your fans are incentivized to do word of mouth, um, that, that goes beyond the classic startup referral a uh, refer friend thing. Now it's like you are incentivized for life to talk about your friends about the creators you love. So uh, I would say the future is that uh, there's been lots of protocols and I think MeTokens is one of them, but now we need to see uh, products on top of them that are more consumer facing for the creators to understand these tokens. It kind of leans into one question that I have um, while all of these, while all these personally tokenized people are here, what are the tools that would make your life easier um, that you would love to see uh, be built that are going to, you know, drive engagement with your token? Probably something like a menu that just always stays open. I think Gitcoin's probably working on something close to that at the moment, but yeah, just having like a persistent menu, I think is something I hear a lot from our community. What do you, what do you mean by persistent menus, like actions that are available or? Uh, yeah, exactly. Like um, different services that people can redeem tokens for. Um, okay, gotcha. So whether that's like tied to the specific token or, or if it's like generalized or something like that. Um, I know, like, I, I took a look back at what the LBT or LTB coin was used for with uh, Adam recently, and they, like, had a whole list of, like, have uh, Stephanie Murphy, like, record a voicemail for you, like, all these different things like that. Yeah, I want to, the, the previous question as well about what, what this is going to look like, um, I think, I think what's something interesting that we've seen in the past year in like the traditional financial space is sort of the sort of new crop of users coming in with applications like Robinhood, where, you know, it's like, it's like a new set of people that, that participate in market act activity as sort of a, it's like a community experience. Like we're all trading these stocks together and we talk about it over some beers or these people are apparently in school. So like, let's say talk about it at school during recess or whatever, like, like there's like a lot of possibilities here for um, seeing that that market exists Fourth, sort of more experiences around trading and creating communities around trading. And as we know, like high, high products is a thing, right? It's like people Get in, getting into the drop and selling the stuff later for a higher value. Like this stuff exists and there's a nascent market there that sort of haven't, hasn't yet like gotten into the ability to trade these sort of crypto based tokens. So I think there's, there's, a, there's at least like a big market there like that exists like these, but these things haven't been like put together yet. So um, we can't see like maybe next year there's like the Robin Hood traders all started making personal tokens and suddenly there's like 50,000 to 100,000 of them. Like it could potentially happen. Uh, and the same with like Reddit, they have like the meme economy subreddit, which is like 500, 600,000 subscribers on there that trade memes, right? Um, but it's all a joke. They're not actually trading it. It's just like they're playing at making an economy. And so this stuff just has to be put together, but it shows that that interest is there, at least sort of in a playful sense, right? So I think that it's, it's possible that this could explode just by the fact that these things haven't been put together yet.
got a question for Alex. Um, in your private chat with token holders, what's the uh, general conversation or tone that people are taking or what are, uh, yeah, I mean, how do people poke and uh, prod each other in terms of like getting activity going? So right now the main chat is, uh, I have to, uh, you know, keep up my promise of running five kilometers a day. So I upload my Strava run and uh, it's just good fun, but people comment on it and like, I'm, like, I'm actually getting better and things. So it's almost like reality TV at this point, just for this month. Um, but I guess people are just um, commenting on whatever thing uh, I do and giving me advice. And um, yeah, I can just, ping them anytime if I have any questions. Um, but we, really, I think one thing I learned is that they can, they act as a board of advisors kind of, but we, really the only person who knows uh, what is the best thing I should do in my life is myself. Um, so I'm not sure I will go the Mike Merrill route of like giving up all of my choices, um, giving like my daily habit in July is fine. Um, and so, um, yeah, I don't, there's not a really general discussion. It's just that uh, it's a place for them to be the first to know whatever's happening around my token. Um, and so there is no like special discussion around the chat. Lauren, you have probably one of the most active uh, Discord groups that I've seen. I keep my notifications turned on for mic responsors and I see people chatting all the time. Uh, what would you, how would you uh, describe like the general demographic of people who are using mic responsors? I see like, especially a lot of artists on your platform. So yeah, yeah. If you can talk about that. Yeah, um, we have, it's, it's kind of a mix because we have people from the Zero X community that are also doing their thing. So we have, um, a, a developer from Zero X who integrated our time slots into his website, and he's already running like an advertisement um, uh, on his on his Zero X tracker, which is like a community tracker for uh, the Zero X protocol. Um, so we have everyone from developers that are like integrating um, to yeah, like these NFT artists and kind of like community. I would say they're like community personalities. Um, that are uh, popping up all over uh, different platforms like Scent and um, just different creator platforms in the space. Um, they're all pretty much using MetaMask. Um, I haven't met a lot of people that are using other wallets other than MetaMask. Um, um, they are, um, yeah, they're, they're an interesting crew and um, they wanna do different things with their time slots. Um, some of them are using it to sell um, to sell like custom art um, uh, that they tokenize on like wearable. Um, and other, t other people are using it kind of more for like the, the sponsorship use case. I think in the long term, it's probably gonna end up being um, more about the sponsorship use case, like the um, quasi ads that don't have tracking on them. Um, so the scheduled contextual advertising. Um, for, uh, for influencers and creators that kind of spans across platforms. But, um, but yeah, it's interesting because people end up using it sometimes for things that I wouldn't have thought that they would use it for either. So um, it, it could end up being that um, there's a, a core use case on micro sponsors that emerges that I didn't even think of. And that's kind of one of the more exciting parts of it to me. Yeah, all, huge shout out to Scent. You, mis you mentioned Scent. I regret not having Cameron participate, but uh, yeah, the stuff they've done with their subscriptions is pretty cool. Uh, Mike, what, uh, what what are your general thoughts about crypto as you're continuing to get into the space and we're sort of drawing you in? I, I, I mean, I feel like I've, I, I've always been curious. I mean, the idea, I, I liked uh, the the quote about um, the posted, like the non-political money. And I don't know, I wrote it down somewhere off one of your slides, but uh, uh, EG, what's his name? But I, I, I think that, you know, like what I did is I, I looked at 
like, oh, this is this is this big giant thing in, in terms of like capital markets that that we don't get to have at the lower level through both regulation, but also just through scale. And I was like, what happens if you apply it to an individual person? And, you know, at the time it was like, it wasn't, it's not like a, it wasn't a, it's not a good idea in the sense that like everyone should do it, right? Like Alex isn't like, oh, I'm going to let everybody vote on all aspects of my life. Like, I don't think that's the right version. That's just like where I ended up experimenting with. But through that experimentation, I think like being able to take these big giant ideas and take them down into these small personal spaces, like the idea of community uh, capital and things like that, I think is super interesting. Um, and and that's that's where I get really excited. It's like what we have is like an explosion of people playing with money in different ways. Um, and it's not playing with money like their money; it's playing with our money. And 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 that's that's it's crazy. I mean, I I think if you try to talk to someone about, I had a friend come over uh, at, who was well, it was like whatever a friend's friend came over, and and she had just graduated from like uh like a, a economics uh not PhD, master's degree or something. And I was like sitting down and I was like, wait, so like when you go to school, like to learn economics, what do you, like, what is money? Like, what do they talk about? Like what money is? And she was like, what? No, we don't talk about that. I was like, but that's like the most important question to me. And I think that that's the thing that I, that I see happening is people playing around with the idea of like what money is. And I think that's, for me, that's the really fun and exciting allure of the space. Simon, you heard about issuing Simon token in 2014. When is Simon token coming? Oh man, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I was like, I was saying, yeah, I'm gonna launch Simon Coin. Um, that's a good question. I, and I've, I've I've thought a lot about recently um, at the intersection of like, you know, whatever they call it these days, the creator economy or the passion economy. Um, it is something that I want to do more or get back more into properly. You know, the intersection of subscriptions, you know, building creator communities, all this sort of intersectional things is super, super interesting and, and definitely picking up. Um, and like one of them was again, like, like what, what is the reason for, for like one solution, obviously like issue a personal talk. But I think, I think one of the reasons why I haven't decided to experiment with it is just, it's just, yeah, it takes time. You know, it, it takes time to, 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 to do something like that. And if, if I choose to do that, then, you know, I, I feel like I would, uh, I need to at least feel like I'm committing to it for the right reasons. Right. You know, I, I, I don't want to just like exper experiment and I play around and then kind of forget about it and move on to something else. Like, I feel like there need to be like a directed goal for me to say, I'm going to do this because it matters to me and or I need to do this for these specific reasons. Um, so if, that's why I, I still pretty much just enjoy being on the sidelines and like thinking up new ideas and supporting the people in the space rather than being um, front and center. Yeah. Joel, you've been the host for the event. What are your thoughts on uh, personal tokens and I don't know, maybe you want to talk a little bit more about what interests you in all this? Yeah, I mean, on a similar note to Simon, you know, we did this uh, crowdfunding campaign in um, 2014 or what have you for Satoshi, right? The hunt for Satoshi. And I think it kind of proved an interesting model, but it also proved, you know, that fan ownership, voting, collaboration stuff, that it needed a certain amount of infrastructure around it to really be viable for a lot of people to do it. Um, and, uh, and it was engaging, but it also, you know, had a certain life cycle around it. And I think I'm looking to not just get into kind of experimental projects in some ways, but something that sort of has some legs and kind of proves a point that then can be kind of built on, um, to bridge over into other audiences. But I see, um, and you know, the conversations today have really underscored this, that there is a huge kind of market opportunity around this type of thing um, when it comes to, you know, up and coming creators and different kind of segments, whether it's video and music and, you know, other types of online content, that there's a kind of interesting kind of incentivization uh, methods, some of which maybe are already in use to some degree, but some of which are sort of yet to be invented, you know, to really kind of 
bootstrap someone's career and then give their kind of early fans a way of kind of participating in their success. Um, and I have very mixed feelings about the kind of regulatory space around it. You know, obviously I've sort of been kind of on the conservative side, you know, relatively speaking, because when we first organized really the first conference on cryptocurrencies and the law at Harvard in, um, you know, late 2013 or 2014, Actually, sorry, no, I think it was January 2015. It was after the Ether sale. Um, it was, um, you know, we kind of looked at the utility token model and kind of in some ways invented it at that thing because Coin Center hadn't put out any of their reports yet. And the Coin Center guys were involved in putting this together as far as a model. But we said, you know, if you pre sell these tokens, it's like pretty obvious. If there's no product that's built yet, it's pretty obvious it's a security. And we don't want to kind of run afoul of the regulators, although. You know, they published a paper and then a gazillion other people did go out and pre-sold utility tokens and, you know, the whole ICO mania became what it was. So, and I, I could see kind of going either way with this where people kind of, you know, put it out there and just say, you know, we don't need to be in the U.S., we don't need U.S. people, let's just kind of go out and do what we want to do. Um, or, um, you know, like I said, historically, I've been on the more conservative side, let's see it play out and hopefully get some regulatory buy-in. Um, but that's a long process. And for instance, like Republic is just launching now. They did a great, um, they have a great product. And I think they just got 5 million into their, I don't know if it's a reggae plus, but kind of like that category of, um, of raise with the kind of token on the back end and ownership stuff. So it is happening. Um, that kind of real ownership with a blockchain is just, you know, kind of a long haul. So we may have that similar, you know, five year time horizon from today before we really get, say, like, you know, regulatory buy-in and kind of models that hopefully can scale more broadly. But, so that's sort of my general takeaway. And I kind of like to see the free form experiments and, you know, the kind of let's do things, thing by the book when we can, when there is a book to go by. I think like to touch upon like the regulatory stuff, that, that for me, was one of the reasons also why I wanted to get into token and, and economics design such that um, you divorce the token from having like a centralized issuer. Um, you know, cryptocurrencies with miners, like it's not a security because these people provide the service to secure the ledger and it's decentralized way to mint a currency. Um, and so that's where the initial thought designs for me came from for token bonding curves was such that you could mint currencies with, without buying it from someone that already created it. So it's like the smart contract mints it. And I still think there, there are ways to um, innovate still at this intersections between like ec the specific economic designs, but also legal innovation, you know, there are, there are ways in which these things can be tied together and put, put into the market. Um, teams like Fairmint, for example, just they say like, yeah, this is, we're using a token bonding curves represents revenue share in a company. It's a security. That's it. Um, but they also did like the legal homework to get that done. But it, it is a lot of work. But I still think there's like a sort of cross section of things that could still be tried and innovated upon, which is it's hard work and the people that will do it will be rewarded for sure. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think one of the big challenges there that I've seen historically is sometimes that regulatory lift is in the, you know, millions of dollars. I think the block stack, they said they spent a million and a half to be able to do theirs. And unless you're like really sure of the model in advance, it doesn't, I mean, even then it may not make sense, but you know, well, a lot of these things are super experimental. So you want to try something that's new, but, spending a million and a half dollars to try to do what Alex has done, I think seems quite unreasonable. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> this is the reason why I didn't also, like I had some informal crypto lawyers go to me and saying like, you know, this is likely a security, but be assured that the SEC doesn't care, regardless of whatever media you get and stuff, they will never care. They have 4 billion, you know, unregulated securities ICO to care about. So yeah, for sure. I totally agree with this.
So, Chris, maybe we should uh, end things here for the day. Um, and thanks especially to Chris for um, helping organize this and all the work he put in. And then all of you panelists, it's been really a pleasure to have these discussions. And we are planning to do another one um, in sort of mid-September uh, to see kind of where things are, maybe even weave some of these things together, maybe have people pitch their own um, kind of personal tokens uh, as they're coming together as well. So Chris, do you want to say anything else in kind of closing? Um, no, I mean, that covers it. I want, yeah, thank you to everyone for joining uh, attendees as well for asking awesome questions and, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get some more folks from the community talking in like a larger event, uh, sort of like pitching ideas that they have for their own personal tokens or just sort of getting those conversations going. I think to me, that's one of the most exciting things about personal tokens is that it changes the dynamic from being so project centric to being more focused on the community. Like, I mean, you know, we're, we're guilty of it even in, <laughs> even in this event today is like, when you go to these conferences, it's usually like projects or people who, you know, are involved in like sort of team efforts, I guess, um, being up on stage and talking. But I often think you get some of like the craziest ideas and some of the most interesting by stepping away from the conference space and talking to people who are in attendance and who are, uh, I don't know, trying to come up with their own ideas and, and maybe trying to find a community to discuss those in. So I think the more we can open up how things are iterated upon to individuals in the space, I think that only makes the whole ecosystem that much stronger. Um, so I'm really ex excited to see how, how that part of like, you know, Ethereum, blockchain, whatever, like open source development or contributions really evolves with like new incentive models that reward individuals for just being awesome people um, as opposed to like having to join specific projects all the time which isn't a bad model, but uh, I think I think there is sort of like a giant gap in in rewarding people who, who just do good work. So I'm excited to see that. All right, well, excited to see what the next phase uh, brings and thanks everyone for your attendance today.